Hey, my name is Andrew Hess, and I am a Power Apps, Power Platform developer. And today I wanted to talk about data sources and when you choose your data source. But I don't want to talk to you about data sources as if you're just a developer or a maker. I want to talk to you about data sources if you're a consultant, if you're creating Power Apps for other customers. Also, I want to talk to you about using data sources if you're a CIO, CEO, you know, a manager of some sort, and which data source could be best for you, for you and your employees. Uh, what is your strategic alignment? Which data sources should you move forward with? So let's get into it. Let's talk about data sources today. There's going to be people who disagree with me. I don't mind if you disagree with me. Go ahead, disagree, put it in the comments, but let's get into this. Okay, so just so we can remove some of my bias here, let's ask ChatGPT, what are the most common data sources used in Power Apps? List the top five. So list the top five. I think it's gonna come back. It's gonna say Dataverse. It's gonna say SharePoint. It's gonna say SQL. It's gonna say Excel. And for the fifth one, maybe it'll go into Dynamics 365. So here it is, Dataverse, SharePoint, SQL, Excel, Dynamics 365. Those are the exact five that I listed. I agree with ChatGPT. These are due to their popularity and the integration capabilities, scalability, and range of features that they offer. Let's talk about each of these and why you should do one, why you shouldn't, and let's come up with some criteria. SharePoint, SQL, Dataverse, Excel. I'm gonna add one more, and this is a little bias for me, and that is Dataverse for Teams. Dataverse for Teams is an option. And I don't want to say, hey, never do Excel. Never do Dataverse, never do SharePoint. Never do Dataverse for Teams. As soon as you try and do workarounds, this is the wrong way to do app development. But when you think about this, what is Power Apps? Power Apps is for the citizen developer. And there's nothing wrong with being a citizen developer. Maybe you're an astrologist, maybe you're a scientist, maybe you're a risk manager, maybe you're a project manager, but inviting you to create apps is what Microsoft wants. This aligns with Microsoft's vision and mission, and that is to empower everyone and every person and every organization. So that is also the citizen developers. It's not just us pro devs. But the thing is, is that as artificial intelligence increases more and more, we're gonna lower the barriers to entry. It's gonna lower the barriers to entry for professional development. Now this is the same thing with video, with text, right? And images, you can now make beautiful photographic images without being a graphic designer. All right, so I reordered these and it's not in order of popularity or best to worst. Uh, this is just in the order so I can talk about them each. Why would you want to create a Power App with a SharePoint backend? One main reason that I prefer SharePoint is document management, and that comes with version history. The version history, the versioning in SharePoint is wonderful. Being able to roll back, not just roll, out, roll back a document, but roll back an entire list. Roll back just one line item. Deleting a document, there are three stages of a recycle bin in SharePoint. That is one main reason that I would use SharePoint as a data source is for document management. Now, the next thing I'm gonna to touch on is less than 5,000 rows per list. Microsoft does recommend that we do less than 5,000 rows per list because as soon as you hit 5,000 rows, you lose functionality of your SharePoint list. You can't do group buys. Um, you may need to index your list in order for it to search well. Although. I believe the lists can you know, go millions and millions of rows, but I'm gonna say with Power Apps is keep your lists below 5,000 rows per list and maybe even 4,000 because when we run into delegation issues, right, you can increase delegation to 2,000 and there are tricks online to do that twice. So there are tricks online to do delegation twice, 2,000, 4,000 rows. Now, just because your Power App is gonna have less than 5,000, 4,000 rows per list, doesn't mean that you can't archive it. Doesn't mean that you can't have an archive plan. Now this is going to create more technical debt. Now when I say 
technical debt, I mean, you're going to have to update your app. You're going to have to have developers or someone to work on this in order to archive the data out of SharePoint because you don't want to lose your data. So you have to be careful here. SharePoint is not the best data source, but for small to medium sized apps, the reason, you, another reason you would want to go to SharePoint is the cost and return on investment. Your company has invested in Office 365 and you have licenses in Office 365. With select versions of Office 365 license model, you can do Power Apps with SharePoint with your license. I'm not gonna, I would, I'm kind of hesitating from the word free. It's not free because there's still a license cost with it. Now, the one downside is, is some of the premium connectors, if you start going to third party connectors, you're gonna have to worry about premium costs. If you are a consultant or a manager, you have to think about the license cost and how you would sell this to your client, right? And then the competitive advantage. Can you enhance and outperform the rest of your competitors using SharePoint? Maybe the competitive advantage is the cost. You're gonna use a SharePoint backend, but you're not gonna require them to have the Microsoft Premium License model. You know, are you better than your competitors? You're giving them options. Look, we can go to Dataverse. We can go to SQL. It's gonna cost you more. It's for large apps. Or we can go to SharePoint to solve some business process temporarily for, you know, one to five years until we can go to SQL. Maybe SharePoint is the right decision. There's only 5,000 rows. Maybe you have 1,000 rows, but you never gain any more rows. Your database does not grow taller and taller. Just you update your rows because you have certain projects. Maybe you archive the projects out and they don't exist in your data source anymore. Although Microsoft may not want me to say this, but I'm gonna tell you the truth. Power Apps is not forever. But in order to back up this claim, I'm gonna quote Satya Nadella. Technologies will come and go. So that includes Power Apps. Power Apps is not forever. SharePoint has not been forever, right? We went through many different versions of SharePoint. Right now, we're already at a modern version of Power Apps. You have to think about that technical debt. And that technical debt is going back to your old apps, updating them, and updating them to the new look and feel. Updating, you know, the back end. Maybe, oh, we want a different lookup table. We want a different items in our dropdown. How long is your app going to last? So when you're thinking about using a data source, maybe you should think about how long your app is going to last. If your app is going to last a week, this is just for some sort of party where you want people to bring in food, but Microsoft Forms isn't enough. Maybe Excel is actually a viable option for a citizen developer. Do you want your citizen developer in your Dataverse, in your SharePoint tables, messing with your data? Maybe not. Maybe Excel is actually the right place for this citizen developer to develop a short-term power app that lasts for you know, three weeks where you don't want to keep the data. This is not enterprise level data. This is just a user who wants to you know, create for their department to bring in items for a party. Maybe you should also consider using Dataverse if you want your app to last more than five years. Dataverse for Teams, I'm gonna say one to five years again, but there's something about Dataverse for Teams that I wanna talk about in just a minute, and that is the data source maturity. Is Dataverse for Teams mature? What are the changes that will happen to Dataverse for Teams in the future? I don't know Microsoft's decisions. Will they increase the price? Will they lower the row limit? Or will they get rid of Dataverse for Teams completely? I don't know those answers to those questions, but those are questions that we need to ask. Dataverse for Teams is really nice for the introduction to Dataverse. So why would you choose Dataverse for Teams? When you use Dataverse for Teams, which is different than Dataverse, it has limited functionality. Uh, you can look that up if you want, but you can only view your app in Teams. As soon as you take your app outside of Microsoft Teams, you then have to pay the premium license model. But the good news is, is that Dataverse for Teams has the ability to scale. You can easily convert to Dataverse with the click of a button. 
And Microsoft loves that. That's what Microsoft wants to do. They want to pull people out of SharePoint. So they're giving you this option of Dataverse for Teams to kind of get let you get comfortable using Dataverse. So then once your app has scaled beyond a million rows, then you can easily convert to Dataverse. Now this is way more rows than SharePoint or Excel because then you're not going to run into those delegation issues. When you create a Power App in SharePoint or Excel, you have delegation limitations. The other great thing about Dataverse for Teams is there's no extra cost yet. Right now, using select Office 365 licenses, no premium, you can use Dataverse for Teams. So you would just create your Power App inside Teams. But the big downside for Dataverse for Teams is there's very little support. There's much less documentation about it. So because there's less support, less documentation about it, there's going to be a little bit of a larger learning curve. But there's an even larger learning curve with Dataverse or SQL if you don't know those data sources yet. So you have to be careful with Dataverse for Teams, but I wouldn't say never. Why would you never ever consider Dataverse for Teams? I think you should consider all of these data sources as you create apps. So now we talked about Dataverse for Teams. Why would you go to Dataverse? Large data sets, enterprise data, relational databases. The app should be, have a plan to last more than five years. It works well with AI, with Copilot, Microsoft Copilot. Microsoft Copilot and Dataverse work very well together. Innovation, agility, since you have Copilot to work with Dataverse, now you can create apps even faster. But the main issue with Dataverse is the cost. Every user that wants to use uh, Dataverse, and this includes users of your app and users who create, they need a premium license of Power Apps or some Dynamics 365 licenses. I'm not a, a license expert. You can look that up or talk with Microsoft. But most likely, you will have to pay more to use Dataverse. Dataverse is used in model-driven apps. You could also use it in Canvas. You could also have a Canvas app where you want to create a UI, UX, and create a, a nice-looking you know, app. And that's why you would use Dataverse. But Dataverse is for these large-scale applications. Why would you go to SQL? To me, I'm more comfortable in SQL than I am in Dataverse. I've been working with SQL for many, many, many years. So this goes along the line of users may be more comfortable in SQL. You may have DBAs. You may have database architects that are way more comfortable in SQL than they are in Dataverse. Now, once again, this is just like Dataverse, though, that you know, you're talking large enterprise data, large data sets, relational databases. And this app, once again, should be more than five years. Uh, it's faster. SQL is faster. You can do complex equations. Stored procedures are now in Power Apps. It's mature and stable, right? Dataverse is actually new, but not really new, but it got rebranded from CDS. SQL is very mature, very stable. Many people are comfortable there. And then you have integration capabilities. I had some users who use their SQL data in another third-party app. And it assigns, you know, different uh, equipment and things to people automatically through their SQL database. So they were comfortable in SQL. They had third-party apps that use SQL, and they wanted their data in SQL. Why not just put their data in SQL through a nice front end like Power Apps? I would also say that it's very secure. If you had a SQL on-prem, this may be the most secure your data could be is having a SQL on-prem data source. Maybe I'm wrong, let me know, but I think the most secure way that you can store your data is through an on-premise system. Now, it may be slower than going through the cloud, but this is gonna be the most secure way to store your data. I put together some criteria that I think maybe you should think about when selecting a data source. I don't wanna say never Excel. This is my opinion. I don't wanna say never SharePoint. I don't want to say never Dataverse. I don't want to say never SQL. Maybe that is part of your strategic alignment, right? So I have strategic alignment in there. Maybe as a manager or a CIO, CEO, maybe your strategic alignment is to never use these data sources. And you can disagree with me. I believe the best competitive advantage is to have options for each data source. 
and to know when to use it and when not to use it. Not to never say no. The best competitive advantage is to have options for when to use a different data source. I hope this video is helpful. So my name is Andrew Hess. Thank you. I'll see you next time.